Uh, today's lecture is uh, from Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, who serves as the director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University, an organization that brings together the people and tools needed to address some of the world's most difficult problems, from climate change and environmental degradation to poverty, disease, and the sustainable use of resources. He reminded all of our graduates about that last evening and charged them all to think of the planet as being slightly unhealthy at the moment and to fix it. Uh, he's also a professor of sustainable development, professor of health policy and management at Columbia University and a special advisor to the United Nations Secretary General on the Millennium Development Goals. He received his PhD from Harvard and is widely considered to be one of the world's leading experts on economic development in the fight against poverty. For more than a quarter century, Dr. Sachs has devised Dozens of, has advised dozens of heads of state and governments on economic strategies. He works closely with multiple international organizations, including the World, World Health Organization, the United Nations Development Program, the World Food Program, UN AIDS, and the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria. Well, thank you so much, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the enormous honor and pleasure of being with you. And I want to talk about the profession in the context of the global the global health challenge. This is an important opportunity and moment for us in global health, medicine, public health challenges because we're in the context of negotiating now a new framework for world development at the United Nations. And while sometimes that news doesn't resonate too far uh, in our own country, it's actually very important for the world and it's made a big difference for the world in the last 14 years. We've had a process called the Millennium Development Goals. A number of you are world leaders in that. I've worked especially closely with Peter Hotez, uh, the dean of uh, the School of Tropical Medicine uh, at Baylor College of Medicine. Um, and the Millennium Development Goals, I think it's fair to say, have been a, a very good lever for our activities because uh, Global challenges found a, a place to uh, advocate uh, a pedestal, an opportunity to help uh, educate world leaders about challenges and about how health is not only an end in itself, perhaps the highest end, according to most people, when they ask what's important for you, they say health. Uh, but also, it is essential for everything else we want to accomplish in society, including economic development. And so the Millennium Development Goals were an important way to help make that idea also part of the discussion and aims and organization of international development activities. Well, those Millennium Development Goals were set for a 15-year period, and they're coming to an end at the end of 2015. And starting in 2012, because it takes the world a bit of time to discuss these things, uh, the 193 member states of the UN have been debating and negotiating and analyzing what should come after 2015. So in a way, my talk is about that. They set the idea of having a new set of goals called Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, to follow the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs. So we're in the transition from MDGs to SDGs role in that. And that's really the backdrop of what I want to discuss today. And so what's interesting from a social and advocacy and moral point of view is that health has been regarded as a basic human right since that concept first came to the fore in 1948 with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You remember Eleanor Roosevelt was absolutely essential for that uh, crucial uh, document, and it's made a very big difference in giving <coughs> an idea in all parts of the world, no matter what kind of government uh, people have, that human rights are important, they reside in individuals, and they include not only political and civil rights, but also economic, social, and cultural rights. And that among those rights is the right to the maximum attainable health. And this was established already in 1948. It doesn't mean that those rights are observed, we know. Uh, it means that we need to aim towards their realization. 
And like many good things in life, uh, and many moral ideas, <coughs> even if they're not realized, they still are beacons for us, and they still can make an important difference in the world. When the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was actually, the World Health Organization was constituted. <coughs> and, the con and the constitution of WHO also set health as a basic human right. And both those documents, the WHO Constitution and <coughs> the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, makes clear that what it means is that the access to health services, health care, is independent of class, race, gender, uh, being a minority or a minority group in a society. That's at least our human aspiration, though of course it is not realized in the world. We've made a little bit of progress in recent years. In 1978, many of you will know or have studied there was an attempt, <coughs> one of the most important attempts, to operationalize this universal health goal in what was then called the Alma-Ata Declaration. And now that place is Almaty uh, in uh, Kazakhstan. And the World Health Organization Assembly, the uh, world's uh, ministers of health, came together in 1978 and declared a practical goal of health for all by the year 2000. And they did something important, I think, practically at that time, not only the idea that one could look at health in a programmatic global way, in other words, set a date, a timeline, a goal, but they also put primary health care at the center of this and talked about the idea that everybody should have access to primary health services locally, in their villages, in their towns, uh, in the cities. And the effort was at least conceived that there would be a scale-up of primary health services all over the world to realize that universal right to health. 